Thank you for joining us uh, today for the first uh, LinkedIn chat that we have today with our two experts on the new EU rules uh, that will help EU enterprises in doing business uh, on uh, online platforms. These rules have just been uh, published and they will enter into force. They will be applicable uh, as of next year. We are ready to take your questions already now and uh, start sending them on the comment uh, section. Um, uh, so we will be able to respond to all of them. Um, it has never been so easy uh, to consult uh, your smartphone or, uh, on, and find a range of options for hotels or restaurants or city trips, for instance, um, than today, or via uh, single online intermediaries or search uh, engine. These online intermediaries or platforms are uh, act as gateways uh, for thousands of businesses and millions of, of consumers. But these gateways uh, should not act as uh, gatekeepers uh, and make it more difficult for uh, businesses to, uh, to do businesses online and offer their uh, services and, and products. So the EU has realized this, uh, this uh, issue and that uh, problems can arise between uh, businesses and online platforms. So that's why we have acted with the new rules that we have uh, uh, put uh, forward. And uh, today we have our two experts uh, um, Werner Steng and uh, Koenig, uh, Michael Koenig to answer these questions that you may have. Welcome to both of you. So before taking the questions from the audience, I have uh, myself the first question. How, Werner, uh, these uh, new rules will uh, help uh, businesses and, and consumers to, to, uh, I mean, to have a better practice or to, to be uh, uh, able to to benefit from uh, the online services better and why are they needed? Yeah, as you rightly said, these platforms have become super important for all of us, whether we are consumers or businesses. As consumers, I guess we all book our hotels on, on platforms like Booking.com or Expedia or, or other platforms. We buy products online on marketplaces. We book our we look for restaurants uh, through search engines and so on and so forth. Businesses, of course, therefore benefit from this as well because they can reach more customers than ever before and very easily so. And last but not least, the platforms themselves, obviously, intermediaries uh, benefit from this as well. And we have 7,000 platforms in Europe. So this is a very vibrant ecosystem that potentially is good for everybody. So why now, what are the problems? Well, many business users have flagged concerns to us in the last few years because they also grow dependent on those platforms. On the one hand, they need them, then they're excellent for them. At the same time, you become dependent. If you sell most of your products or services through some platforms, um, you need that platform. And if that platform doesn't treat you fairly or nicely, uh, you still cannot walk away. Yeah? So therefore, we try to address this imbalance that sometimes arises between those gatekeeper platforms, as you call them, and the business users. And the first measure that we took was to improve transparency for the business users. So you should know what you're up to. What are the rules of the game? Um, and this is very, very important for the business user. So what the rules say is that the terms and conditions so that defines the rules, they must be simple and clear. If they are changed, uh, you must get information well in advance before that you can adapt to those changes. You must understand how ranking fun works, so the way in which the results are shown to the consumers. You must know uh, how that platform may use data that are generated when you're on this platform and how it uses those data, whether it shares those data. Also, sometimes the platform may compete with those other sellers on its platform. And there, of course, it's very important for you to understand, okay, in what way may that platform treat its own services better than my services? Many thanks, uh, Werner. I mean, for Michael, maybe a question to you for, for now. I mean for many businesses uh, appearing on search results uh, and ensuring this uh, on page one rather than page 10, obviously, it's, it's, a key, uh, it's a key issue, it's a key, it's critical and it can make or break uh, businesses. Uh, the new rules uh, will mean uh, platforms and uh, search engines need to explain how they uh, organize this research, uh, I mean, this search results. Does the new regulation on online platforms mean that platforms will, um, and search engines uh, need to reveal and explain how their algorithm work? Um, you know that ranking is basically the intrinsic feature of, of most of these platforms. 
um, ranking basically does a selection and trying to match um, the what the consumer or other users search in the best in the best way and that's why it is it is key um, and we also know that um, you know if you appear on page 10 you basically don't exist as a business and that's why we put a lot of focus on the question on, on ranking and indeed the rules specify that um, both platforms and search engines have to make clear what are the main parameters that determine how you are ranked so what are the key features, be it uh, reviews, for example, is it uh, location data, is it uh, past uh, performance and other factors. Um, now, how far does this go? Um, it does not go as far as revealing entire algorithms. Why? Well, A, for most users, this will not be helpful to get a lot of source code. It's just too complicated. You want to know what I, as a business user, do I have to do to be higher up? So it's really the main parameters and not full algorithms, which at the same time are also some of the key uh, sort of yeah, features and, and, and innovation features that platforms and, and these uh, marketplaces use. So it is the useful information, the key features that bring you up. Um, for example, also, can I pay to get further up? And what happens if I pay? How far am I further up? Um, but not uh, technical questions around algorithms. Many thanks, uh, Michael. Um, before we take the first questions from the audience, I have a last question for you, uh, Werner. I mean, these new rules uh, on online platforms uh, sound very practical. If I am a business a startup or a small company, how this will uh, uh, this will work for me? And uh, uh, if I no longer, for instance, uh, uh, listed on a, an e-commerce website, how these uh, new rules will uh, apply to me? As a company. Yeah, indeed, you refer to delisting, which is the practice whereby a platform may close your account. And that was signaled to us also as one of the major problems business users face. Because as you said, you may depend on a platform, you sell most of your products through that platform, and then all of a sudden your, your account is closed. And that may be for good or for bad reasons, because you may have done something wrong, you may have been caught selling counterfeit products, but also it may have been a mistake, or it may be something that you can easily repair. Uh, so now we have a couple of rules that are very, very concrete and real for business users. Already in the terms of conditions that I mentioned before, the platform has to spell out very clearly on what grounds you may be delisted. So what are the mistakes you could be making if you want. Yeah? We also then say that when once that happens, you need to be informed immediately and you need to give, be given the reasons for this. And then very importantly comes the whole redress part that is also part of our regulation. Uh, so what can you do about it if you are concerned by such a decision? Well then, from now on, you will have access to, a, to an effective complaints handling mechanism. Someone to talk to. That was something that was often flagged to us by businesses. There's nobody I can phone if I have a problem. Now there will be a system in place that you can back to the platform and say, listen, uh, you just delisted me. I think this was not correct and here's my argument. And then you hopefully will get the problem solved. But the regulation also helps you if that does not work, because we also have integrated other mechanisms. We are promoting mediation, so out of court settlement between platforms and, con and business users where they can't agree internally. And last but not least, we also facilitated access to courts if a platform systematically does not comply with the obligations in this regulation, it can be taken to court in Europe by associations, uh, organizations representing the interests of, of many of those business users. Many thanks, Werner. Actually, the first question from our audience is uh, not about businesses, because we understand, I mean, uh, um, how it could benefit to, to businesses, uh, but uh, it's about uh, consumers. So how these rules will help consumers also to, to buy online, I mean, to benefit from the best offers online? Yeah, well, <coughs> the rules are designed to make it uh, fairer and more predictable for business users, for traders, for app developers to use these uh, online platforms. And this has an immediate effect also for consumers because they will see more offers, more innovative offers, different services uh, uh, provided through these platforms. And ultimately also because you have more competition, more players, more offers, more competition on these places, uh, ultimately lower prices. If I may add to that, it's also important that the consumer then actually also sees what is most relevant from the consumer perspective. So not only there's a lot of competition, which is because the basis for a wider offer and more choice, but also, for instance, where this uh, platform offers their own services and third party services, that there is no discrimination, there's no undue discrimination between those own services and the, those provided by third party sellers. Because I, as a consumer, obviously, 
I want to get the hotel or the, the, the good that suits my need best and I don't care whether wh whom this benefits most. Yeah? I want to get the most relevant results and, and I think this, this regulation will contribute to that. Many thanks to both. We have a more technical question now from the audience. Do you classify uh, what we call uh, distributed ledger technology, DLT, or blockchain as platforms? So are they going to be covered by these new rules? Well, I think around these questions, we always have to distinguish on the one hand the platform itself that is moderating the interaction between business users and consumers on the one hand, and the technologies they use. Um, and these are really distinct questions, and our regulation applies to depending on whether you know, the platform is indeed moderating and intermediating between you know, an offer and consumers uh, on the other side, regardless of the technologies it may use, be it blockchain or bleed any other technologies also in the future. Okay, and uh, for you, Werner, uh, another question uh, which uh, also interests a lot our uh, viewers and community um, on LinkedIn. Platforms can enter the market and compete more easily than traditional uh, industry uh, players. This will drive out these players and reduce competition. This can harm uh, consumers. Do the new rules um, address these competition issues? Yeah, it's a very relevant question and a, an important debate that we are having. The interplay also between our regulation and competition policy and um, what, what contributes to that, to that, to that issue. I mean, of course, our regulation uh, plays an important role here because it, it tries to, to establish a more level playing field already between the platforms themselves and the sometimes millions of business users that depend on those platforms. So there's a very strong pro-competitive effect already from this. It also addresses some areas like access to data, use of data, or the self-preferencing of your own services, which are, of course, potential mechanisms for very large platforms that have privileged access to data and that may potentially want to benefit their own services to do that. Now, the transparency rules that we have in the regulation are already meant to, uh, to, to, to bring this more to the open, that everybody can see what is happening and, and challenge that. Uh, but all of this has consistently been complemented by the rigorous application of competition law that we've seen in the last few years. So where we felt, where the Commission felt that some platforms were actually abusing or potentially abusing their dominant positions, you have seen quite some rigorous action from the Commission doing so. And last but not least, the story doesn't end here, of course, you may also be aware of the of the deliberations on the fitness of, digi of competition rules in the digital age, and there was a, a special report, uh, a report by special advisors, the Commissioner Vestager, and they also ex examined those questions and tried to find out under what circumstances may there be uh, anti-competitive behaviour that may even require further reaching measures. And we are, while we are in the process of studying all of that material, we're also monitoring the markets very closely to see whether and, whether and if there are regulatory gaps that may have to be closed in the future. Actually, we have a very short, I mean, for the next question, very short question, but very relevant, which also covers, I mean, follow up what uh, you've just said, uh, um, how the new rules will support innovation in Europe, maybe uh, to both of you. Should I start? Well, I think it, it uh, connects a bit to what I, what I said earlier. I mean, these rules make it um, more predictable and therefore if you want, lower the barriers for innovative companies to use these platforms, to go online, because they know now what are the rules of the game, and there is a, a, a standard, if you say, body of fairness rules where they can rely and say, well, I have a protection if things go wrong. You know, I, I get my problem solved if I have an issue with this platform. And that will allow them you know, to use this more and offer yeah, more innovative uh, services to consumers. I would add to that that there's also the innovation element in the platform industry itself because we're also trying to create a more trusted environment, generally speaking, because there's a lot of criticism of platforms these days. Uh, but we want also new platforms to come in, we want European platforms to come in, to, to scale up in Europe. And if we provide an ecosystem where, generally speaking, there's more trust that this is following certain basic rules, uh, then probably also new, new, in, new innovative platform services themselves will come into the market and probably challenge some of the incumbents by doing things in a better way, in a fairer way, in a more innovative way. 
So I think there's a pro-competitive innovation, uh, pro-innovation effect uh, across the board. Many thanks to both. Actually, our uh, viewers uh, also want to know more about how we, we came, uh, how the Commission came with these uh, new rules, and uh, to which platforms we did uh, speak uh, when we uh, proposed, I mean, before we proposed the, the, the rules. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how uh, you approached platforms, which, with, which one did you speak? You want to start? We want, well, maybe you start on yeah, the okay, let me fact start. finding part. Fact and, uh, find, I mean, it's, a, it's a very good question. It's easy to answer because this regulation was preceded by a very long preparatory process, which was also very inclusive. It already started three years ago with a, with a, with a communication on online platforms, which was based on a wide consultation of the entire world, not just platforms, but platform users, society in general. So we already started sort of gathering information on what the issues were, both positive and both negative. This was then followed by a series of studies, of consultations, of workshops, of conferences, uh, in which all parts of, again, society came in and was able to provide us with their inputs. So in that sense, we've been collecting evidence for many, many years, uh, and there's, there's probably no platform, since you ask, that we have not spoken with, and not just the big ones, but of course we were particularly interested in the views of, of smaller platforms, as much as obviously of this wide variety of business users, depending on any type of platform. So this was very rigorous preparation. Maybe shall we just uh, on on the scope um, because I think it's also important to see what is actually in scope, which is you know any platform that intermediates a relationship between consumers and uh, business users with a focus on Europe. Yeah, so you have to imagine this like a triangle, you know, where you have the platform between business users and and uh, um, and consumers. So it's the classic online marketplaces, it's uh, hotel booking platforms, it's app stores as well, uh, it can be uh, price comparison sites. Um, so it, it is really uh, trying to encompass its search engines for the key articles in particular on ranking. So it has quite a, quite a broad reach to, uh, to capture the key, uh, the key players, but it doesn't only apply to a certain layer or a limited number of players or the big ones. I mean, these are really fairness standards across the board for, for all platforms that do business in Europe. And if we continue to enter a bit more in the details of the of the regulation, the new regulation, so once again, which will be uh, applicable as of uh, next year in, uh, in all member states of the EU, if uh, I were a startup uh, and if I do not ensure that businesses um, sell their goods or services at the lowest prices on my platforms, no one will use it and cannot earn on commissions. So that's the situation. Does the new regulation um, on online platforms stop me? Practical question. Thanks. So um, this, I think, refers to, to this practice where, um, where platforms have specific um, arrangements with some of their suppliers, um, asking them to really offer the best and the lowest prices on the platform and not being more attractive or having a more attractive offers either on their own website or on other platforms. Now, um, here we <coughs> again uh, wanted to, to bring more transparency on the use of these, of these rules. So to clearly answer the question, no, this uh, regulation does not stop you from doing so, but you have to be transparent about it. You have to be spell it clearly out in your terms and conditions, explaining you know, who wants to do business on my platform, has to bring the best offer on my platform and nowhere else, um, and explain the reasons, which uh, very often is precisely to say, well, this is for me a means to attract new con uh, consumers uh, and, uh, and avoid you know, distracting uh, uh, consumers in the end to other offers which are more interesting. That's also, that explains actually the complexity of the question, complains why we limited ourselves to, to transparency, because some stakeholder groups were asking for bans. This has been examined by competition authorities for quite a while with, with pretty mixed results, so it was not so clear-cut. And also, once again, if you read the Special Advices report to Commissioner Vesta, you will also see that the experts distinguished really between very specific situations. They did not say this is a bad practice across the board and always harms consumers or business. 
business users, they said, well, there are very specific circumstances in terms of competition between platforms, for instance, which may justify in certain instances or may explain why in certain instances this may be not acceptable, whereas in others it may be perfectly well acceptable. But since we are covering this wide ecosystem of 7,000 platforms in so many different in so many different areas of the economy, we did not want to come with a one-size-fits-all solution that may do good in some situations but harm in others. Actually, I have also a question on that differentiated treatment. I mean, I think it's relevant to what you just said. I mean, is there any um, differentiation between the platforms? How, how, what do the rules say on this? I think with differentiated treatment, you're referring to the those platforms that offer their own services on their platform while having third-party offers as well. That's the article on differentiated mm -hmm. treatment, mm -hmm. which was also very hotly debated. Mm -hmm. And I could almost give the same answer that I just gave on, on MFN clauses, if you want, because once again, um, self-preferencing, as you also sometimes call it, may be very harmful in certain circumstances uh, and pretty normal in other circumstances. So which is again why this regulation uh, limits itself to transparency obligations. Yeah? The business user really has to know, um, so the platform will say, welcome to my platform, that's what I do. Be aware, I'm, I may be competing with you and uh, I may be treating my own services in different ways in the following ways. So at least maybe you have a choice then to, to, to go to another platform and not to this one or at least it allows all of us to monitor very closely whether those practices do any harm that may then, in specific situations, require further reaching action. And again, here I think we should again point to the work of our colleagues in the competition field, which have taken up a concrete case where they look into the concrete uh, uh, impact, and I think the insights in this case and the findings will then also be sort of a landmark for, for the rest of the industry. Many thanks. To come back on the, um, the success of the online platforms, I mean, you, Werner, you mentioned that we have 7,000 uh, platforms in the EU. Um, and one of the questions is, I mean, platforms is often linked to, linked, sorry, to how they use data provided by consumers or generated from uh, the transactions. Do the new rules oblige them, oblige this platform, this platform to share this insight with uh, businesses? No, it does not require them to share data, um, which was indeed a request again from some, some stakeholder groups. Um, what the rules actually say is that they have to be very transparent about what data they collect, what data they use and how they use them, what data they share with their business users and on what conditions, but also very importantly, what data they may share with third parties in a context that is no longer limited to the service that they provide to the business user itself. Yeah? So that's a very, very important first step. Um, and as, as Michael just said, the, this, this competition case he's referring to is specifically about data, mm -hmm. where now our colleagues are really examining to what extent this privileged access to data by such platforms may indeed lead to situations where they abusively use those data to favor their own services. And also actually some member states have launched uh, similar investigations. So we'll see what comes out of all of that. Many thanks. Uh, Michael, uh, just to come back to the redress me mechanism to, for the audience to really understand how it will work, you describe bus businesses as uh, being brilliant on uh, online platforms. Are businesses really going to start uh, complaining or to online platforms uh, uh, if uh, it exposes them to uh, some, of, uh, some form of retaliation, for instance, or meaning that they will lose an important and uh, or even uh, only sales uh, channels that they, they can rely on. So how they could use this uh, redress mechanism in the best way? Yeah. Well, I think the starting point, nevertheless, if you have a problem with your platform, is that you know you, you, you turn to the platform and say, listen, something is, is not going well or, or I, I feel mistreated. And that's why we uh, uh, created this obligation of an effective uh, internal complaint handling uh, mechanism because too often we heard that people don't get an answer or that they get an automatic answer or, they, or they're directed to the headquarters in the US which uh, which doesn't help anybody so here uh, platforms have to have a response mechanism which uh, which is effective which is free of charge and which is gives a timely response 
But the other point that you mentioned is, of course, a very important element that um, as a business user, you're dependent on this platform. So you might not want to make too much of a fuss, to be honest. Yeah? And that's uh, why we created a, a self-standing possibility for business associations to take up uh, uh, problems yeah, that they hear from, from individual business users, and bring them in their own right to a court. So they, it's really decoupled from the individual case. It's an association that then can say, well, there seems to be really a structural problem in this platform, which is constantly sort of not playing by the rules. So we go to a court and, uh, um, and the court has to really hear this uh, association and uh, as a result can order the platform to change either its terms or its practices or to engage in a, in a specific behavior. Which of course also means that this individual business doesn't have to court, even if it was courageous enough to go to court, it would say, well, that can take long, it may be very expensive, or that, that court may be in another jurisdiction outside Europe. So all of these problems, or most of these problems, are solved through the mechanism that Michael just described. Okay, very good. Before we conclude this um, this live, uh, many thanks to both. I would like to come back to the next steps on, uh, I mean, the next step for the European Commission, for you uh, experts on uh, platforms. Um, and if you could just remind us a bit what is the timeline for the entry, uh, for the application of this new regulation, which will really change uh, also the, uh, the, 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 the landscape, I mean, the platform landscape in the European Union. So. Yeah, maybe to, to take your last uh, question uh, first. So um, the rules, as you said, have been published. They're available in all languages. Um, and they will come really into application that platforms will have to follow them in a year's time. So by, by July next year, uh, platforms really have to have all the rules and, and the transparency measures in place that are in, in this um, regulation. Now, in the run-up, we, we're not just going to uh, wait and see. We're going to, uh, A, work. Um, to make this implementation as smooth as possible. Um, for example, we are planning to issue guidelines on how to implement, in particular, the ranking provision, because this is a key provision which is not easy to, to, to apply in practice, and that's why we will develop guidelines which come before, for example. We will work on code of conduct, for example, around the complaint handling, which is an area where it could be useful to sit down with industry on how to best organize this that all business users profit. Ben, you want to talk about the observatory? Yeah, probably before the observatory, we also work with member states because also member states have to play a certain role in this regulation, setting up bodies to, uh, to, uh, to, to enforce this, this regulation, but also probably in the area of mediation. So we also help member states get ready for this as well. But we're also looking forward uh, at the same time because when we uh, propose this regulation, we also set up an observatory of the online economy. Uh, simply to, to understand better, better some of the key issues that were so widely debated during the negotiations, whether it is the data issue we discussed or the self-preferencing or other issues. So we, we keep examining the space with independent experts, with study contracts and ourselves, of course, in, in order to, to not stop here, but really keep an eye on, on the most pressing issues. Many thanks to, to both. Uh, it's time to conclude now. Um, uh, we apologize for the technical pro problems that our viewers uh, may have experimented during the, the live. Many thanks again. And we will obviously uh, be uh, here to answer any questions that you will have uh, after this chat. And um, we will, uh, uh, our community manager is here uh, and community um, um, team is here to, uh, to answer any other questions. Thanks a lot to, to, uh, to both uh, for your expertise and your explanations. Thank you very much. Thank you.